Do you ever, have you ever said this to Sage? And I, I found myself saying this. Aaron, we're gonna be all right here. Don't take guilt with you up there. It's okay. See you soon. Please enjoy where you are. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, my larger assumption is that where he is, there isn't any guilt. I don't know why, but the moment he was gone, I just went, man, I hope he knows how much I loved him. Welcome to the Good Grief, Good God Show, hosted by Grammy nominee and Emmy Award-winning hit songwriter Brad Warren of the Warren Brothers. Join Brad monthly on the first, third, and fifth Tuesdays, audio or on YouTube, for raw, honest conversation about surviving things that suck. For today's episode, Brad welcomes producer, singer-songwriter, and four-time ACM award-winning bass player, Jimmy Lee Slos. Jimmy's influence in the music industry is undeniable, but behind the spotlight lies a shared tragedy. Like Brad, Jimmy has endured the heartbreak of losing his son. I'm producer Matt Pivato. To learn more about today's guest, Brad, and the show, check the description where you'll find clickable links to access this episode's audio and YouTube links to connect to the show on social media and to visit goodgriefgoodgodshow.com. On the behalf of Brad's wife, executive producer Michelle Warren, and segment producer and guest booker Lisa Bolt, thank you for tuning in. Good Grief, Good God Show is brought to you in loving memory of Sage Michael Warren. And this episode is brought to you in loving memory of Aaron Slos. So I guess Aaron was 2019? Yep. Well, he just got out of rehab, right? When, when he... Um, he had been out of rehab maybe a year or so, two years. The last rehab he was in was in near Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah. Okay. Um, so he went three or four of those and they were great. And uh, again, I would be there, go see, hang, like all of us do, we're there. Um, he held a job down for a while, was doing great, had an apartment up there and then he moved back to Nashville which in retrospect at this point he's in his 30s early 30s I can't say no you're not yeah, yeah. you're not coming home where you were born <laughs> and raised he told me several years earlier when he was in Kentucky visiting his grandmother he said if I come back to Nashville I'll die And so he knew that, but he came back eventually and, and, you know, fentanyl. It's crazy. Was it a pill? Uh, was it a, a... I think he was smoking it. Yeah. I think he smoked it. He was living with his roommates in a place that I'd never been inside. Still haven't been inside that house, yeah. which someday, but I, I'm still not ready four years in, but I would you know, go get him. We'd hang, we'd do our thing. We'd go skiing. You know, we got the place in Colorado. He and I were out there a bunch, you know, he was incredible snowboarder. And I'm just this, I'm a bass player. I'm lucky to play one string at a time. You're, you're really good by the way <laughs> for, for an old guy, but I'm sure yeah. he was probably, he was probably jumping. Like my feet don't need to leave the ground. I'm, I'm doing jumping like by that. accident. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But so we, we had that and it was so good. And, um, we'd come back and then he would go, he has an awesome house that he was renting or he was living at with these cats. Beautiful. A better house than I live in. <laughs> and uh, so it was a real surprise to me because I trusted that he was in a good, you know, uh, environment. Yeah. But it, it didn't work out that way. And that's where he passed into the next world. But... Um, and that last text he sent you. We, um, what about tough, tough love? It showed up it, it, in our dynamic in that, you know, if you say you're going to be so, okay, whatever's going on, I don't know what's going on. You're calling me, you're texting me some, you fall off the grid for a few days here and there. Mm -hmm. Then you text, just say, if you're going to be somewhere, if you're going to Uber somewhere, let me trust you. Let's build trust here. I'm going to trust you're going to be there and I'll meet you there. So that's kind of how it played out. Um, we had a, uh, a ski trip planned, snowboard trip planned, and he didn't show up. We were supposed to leave at like three in the morning here to make, 
He didn't show up right on time and he didn't communicate the whole day. So I figured something was up and, I, and I'll make this a short story. So I do go on anyway. So I went on I went anyway, to Colorado, yeah. got there and I, and he called, he said, okay, I know, I know, I know. I said, all right, so here's what I'm going to do. I've already gone on Southwest and booked you a flight this afternoon. I'll come back into Denver. We want to do this. It's going to be great still, but I wanted to teach you a lesson at least if I can, even now that you're a grown man, yeah, yeah, no, that when you say something, I'm going to trust you. You never stop being a father. Right. So he said, great. And then he called me back. I can't do it. Some people don't want me to come out there. You know, they don't want me to be there. They're going to, they're talking me into staying here. It was his girlfriend at that point. So I went, okay, that, that was not a good moment. So I said, all right, I love you. Crazy about you. Think about it. I'll come and get you tomorrow. So that didn't happen. That was our, the last ski trip we had planned that we didn't make. Get back into town. All's well. You know, we're going to go. We're going to go. We ate a few times, hung out. Right. He was great. He was great. And then I was having dinner and I get a text saying, can we hang again? I'm trying to be responsible. Teach him. Well, I would love to, man, I'd love to. And this is another guilt thing that I have, mm -hmm. but I am actually out right now with some people having dinner. And he said, all good. Let's just have lunch tomorrow. I said, great. That sounds great. I'll see you tomorrow at lunch. We'll make it. I'm excited that he's talking to me. No distress kind of sounding uh, text. And then he said, man, love you so much. I'm sorry for all the shiz. S-H-I-Z. I said, dude, I ain't no shit. I love you. And that was it. Then I get the calls that we know at um, early in the morning, six. And oh, cool. Kim, Kim called me. They, The police had tried to call me, but I guess I'd shut my phone off from dinner before or something. It was buzzing, but I didn't hear buzz. Mm -hmm. And she was way, way upset. I thought it was a joke. I said, what? Isn't that what we do? And then where does your ex-wife live? Where she is... lives in Hermitage. Hermitage. Finally, they got a hold of her. I guess they went through his phone and saw my number. might have been the last text or among the last text. I don't know. And, um, and thus began this road right there. Boy, oh boy. That's a crazy call, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It is. You just can't believe it. You just keep thinking there's something wrong here. It just, this is not real. I still have those moments. Yeah, yeah. I will wake up and um, that's just a weird dream. Or oh. yeah, oh yeah, just for a moment. And not wanting. Um, Matt, do you? We need to take. Is there a reason you want to take a break? Yeah, I gotta make a quick adjustment. My apologies. I have a two o'clock with your buddy Kenny Chesney. Am yeah, I yeah. late? Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Let's go. Come on. The boss has spoken. Dude. Sit your ass down. <laughs> we love him. We need to get him a quit. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to get back to Texas. Tell me the truth. <laughs> um, so, a couple of things I want to ask you. Not yeah. sure the air, what, what order this stuff ought to be in. Not being married to Aaron's mom. Oh, that's really you have good. a wonderful wife. Really good. Wife, not a girlfriend. Yeah. Heather. Yeah. Beautiful. Too good looking for you. Uh, you know, <laughs> I keep telling her that. And she says, I know. I know. It's cool. I'm good with it. No. Um, but but not being married to his mom, like I don't have that experience. It's, this yeah. is a tough road. How challenging was that? It's still challenging. It has been challenging, but not in a dark way. Mm -hmm. Not in like a yeah. Uh, you know, I can't bring it up. She's, she knew Aaron. Mm -hmm. She'd gotten to know Aaron. It was still, they still weren't really, really extremely close. They just hadn't had that many years of, yeah. you know, Aaron would yeah. be in LA or in Kentucky. And, but uh, they knew each other. We went on some snowboarding trips together, which again was key in building relationships back mm -hmm. then. That was what Aaron and I were doing instead of drinking. Yeah. Instead of him drinking, instead of him. And man, I'm to the best of my knowledge, 
and an attic is can be pretty sneaky. Yeah. But to the yeah. best of my knowledge, <laughs> there was nothing but snow. In oh, a dad house. knows. A dad you know, knows. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was good. Yeah. Um, but it's been if it's been an issue at all, it's showing up in that Heather doesn't feel worthy of the experience that I'm going through and that you are having with your. So there's never uh, a, Hey, get it together, pal. And you have to explain to her, Hey, this is too heavy. I can't no, just get it together. No, none no. of that stuff. Well, that's good. No, no. She, she is sympathetic. She is amazing. Uh, when I got the call about Aaron, I drove straight to, we weren't married then. And I drove straight to her house over in uh, Fairview. That's where I went. Um, I didn't go to the scene of the crime. It was a crime scene at first because, you know, yeah. and the, the, uh, the police didn't want us there. So I went to Heather's. And it actually is a crime by the way, because somebody put fentanyl in and I'm not, a, believe me, I'm not a fan of yeah. drugs on the street, but I got a lot of years to yeah. figure out what this is doing in my life. And now I've had 18 years of being clean and understanding yeah. how it's different, but I was 36 years old. I didn't get policing at 20. I mean, right. You know, it's, it's everywhere now. It's everywhere. It's just everywhere. Fentanyl in particular is just, but she is, she's been awesome. She really has. But like I said, she struggles with, um, not being the biological mother and still, cause I've asked her, I said, man, let's, you should go to a meeting or something to, so you can hear the stories of, the, of other mothers that have lost. Yeah. And uh, she just, it, it's something that's really hard for her to, she just doesn't feel worthy to do that. that that's interesting because there's something huge in your life she can't totally share. That's right. Uh, that's a big happening. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, a, interesting because um, I don't know that, Michelle, I don't know. Uh, Michelle and I have, we came up through addiction with Sage. Um, we rode the waves and we were in shape. When this happened, we just got closer together. But we had to, had to decide years before that we were going to be on the same page, that there wouldn't be blame. You did this or you did this. Right, um, right. And uh, we just are riding the wave together. But I, yeah, I'm always interested in that. It's a difficult thing to be his biological mother. You share that with someone you're not married to, regardless of whether or not you're friends. And it seems like you have a good relationship with everyone. But, uh, well, I share with her that we have some, some gentlemen in our group that aren't the biological fathers. Yeah. Yeah. But I, who we don't even think like that. You, your loss is as substantial as ours. Yeah. And I try to communicate that to her, but it's not. Yeah. It's, it's when you raise, then there's a point where you, I mean, it's, it's raising is not raising. So, uh, talking about our group, uh, Sage passed away. I'm in a haze, whatever it's, I'm in a haze of gratitude to be perfectly honest. I had the house was full of people. My life was full of people. Mm -hmm. I got messages from everyone. Uh, I, I really was just humbled and grateful for the uh, early on. The thing that choked me up most was how kind people were. Common friend Lance Miller. He said, "Hey, and I, I, I remember that you had lost a child, and I, you know, but I hate to say this, but I sent the obligatory text, man. I'm so sorry, blah blah blah, to you, and that that was." That's what do you do? By the way, you and I weren't close before that. We, you know, we I mad respect but you know we we're people that we knew but didn't you know had never seen each other socially uh and then Lance says you, Jimmy wants to talk to you and I'm like okay yeah that's that's probably great for me and we went I don't remember where we went but we went and sat on somewhere and just I mean let it fly <laughs> Lance, just, Lance joined in with us we're all three balling we're okay. laughing we're I mean it was it was quite an intense yeah, yeah. two and a half hour breakfast. It was amazing. And um, right. it struck me at that moment, oh, now I know why he needed to talk to me. And that's what I need to do. And I have been able to do that a couple of oh, times since then when I knew someone that I didn't know very well. And their child passed away instead of being like, hey, you okay? Is everything? I'm just like, my feet are there. Anything you want to do, right. say? 
man. You need to yell at someone. Here you go. Um, this, uh, yeah, this, that started with you. I'm, I'm, I'm eternally grateful. Like, you know, beyond. Oh man, and and that's kind of where the group started. Kind of really started humble beginnings, but um, now that we're a worldwide powerhouse, yeah, it's- <laughs> right. But oh my, let me just say this about that: the healing, even if it's incremental. The healing sitting across from someone that is uh, going through the same hell that you're going through. That you don't even have to speak, right? It's just there's something that's understood that's so incredibly deep. And so it's like a spiritual balm. Um, Yeah. and, And those meetings we had, those breakfasts. And then we just continued it. I remember at one point you said, do you think anyone else would mm-hmm. want to do this? Yeah. And I was, I said, I was hoping you would say that. I, and you're just a natural at it. You're just a natural at it. But well, Leave it to me to bring AA into everything. Oh, it's you know? great. Yes, <laughs> but it works. It really it? does work. <laughs> it works if you work it. It works <laughs> if you work it. Uh. Um, but uh, there's nothing like it. The, and I've told this story to you before. The, the, the uh, meeting I was at where Aaron hadn't been gone long and you're still in a daze. I mean, a serious fog, Mm -hmm. serious fog. And it's not because you worry where they are. It's none of that. It's, it's just, okay, how in the world do I put one foot in front of another one going forward for the rest of my prescribed life? What, what do I do? Mm-hmm. Uh, how in the world is this going to happen? <laughs> and um, everyone at the at that service had put their hands on me in, in Pentecostal fashion, and it was great. It was great. And, and I was just soaking it in. Thank you, God. The people care. The people are here praying. They wanted me to come here. Heather's there. We're hanging. And now it's over, and I'm back getting a coffee. It's kind of starting to filter out. And one stoic man walks toward me out of that crowd. And there was something different about him. Uh And he just came to me and he said, I lost my son. And I'm telling you, he said, Jimmy, nobody will ever understand quite like someone else. You will get more healing from people that have been through it and are still walking through it. And man, I just that flooded me and I, I will always remember that. I don't know who he was, but still I know, don't know I still don't know. But, but what he said was, and that's the first time that early on someone that had been going through it for his, his son passed at 18. I remember, and he must've been 70 years old. And that lets you know right there. It doesn't go away. No, it doesn't. And, and yeah. interestingly, I don't want it to go away. Thank you. <clears throat> Try saying that to someone. That I know. They don't get that at all. There's, there, it's not a badge. It's a, there's an, in, there's a sweetness about holding Aaron's memory up and honoring him, his presence, this awesome presence here on this earth every day. Why would, okay, so we asked the question in our group. We've talked about it. If you could go back, knowing what you know now, knowing the heartache, the pain, the tragedy that's going to happen, would you go back and not have that child? 15, 16 guys in this room right here. And nobody says, yeah, I'd go back and not. No. Ooh, no. Even the people that aren't necessarily super cool with God right now and, and you have trouble being great. They don't say that. Yeah. They, right. No, no. I would right. never. Therefore, I am not want to lose the memory. And right. with that memory is going to come pain as long as I'm here on this yeah. earth. Which is, yeah. by the way, is okay because this world is full of pain. Like... If I can take this, bring it on. Yeah. Like whatever that is now, it's not. Yeah. It's not, nothing's foolproof. It doesn't turn you into Superman, but man, it, uh, it is a superpower knowing where you're headed. It is a superpower not being afraid of pain because pain is always existent for you. So you don't spend half of our time. I literally believe in my life previously, I was running from pain. Therefore I couldn't get 
things accomplished or have peace or be still in God's presence because I was literally running from pain or discomfort. Mm. Not doing that anymore because it's always a little uncomfortable, a little painful, correct? Yes, it is. So why don't yes. we just sit in it? Mm-hmm. Your and I, your your experience when you were five, uh, your temperament probably doesn't doesn't hurt because you're you're a peaceful human being. But that experience that you had when you were five, uh, bringing you to this place, it's like what we can do. You came to me, then I come to others. You and I are talking. I think anyone else want to do this? I'm two fathers, right? Ward and um, Mark Robbins, and we're. I had been talking to them, and they had they were they are did not have the same experience as us, but they um, had talked to therapists who were, had never lost a child, and they like don't want to talk to you because you don't know what I'm going through. And then my friend John Phillips, mm-hmm. the five of us sat around my kitchen table right. and had our first little meeting. And I hate how big our group has become, yeah. but I love how big our group has become. Right. I hate that there's that many people doing it, but oh yeah. Um, Man, what a healing. And you you said it just a second ago. And we talked about it last time. We could just sit here Mm -hmm. and not say anything and be comforted because that's the only time that there's double digits of people in a room that know exactly how I feel ever in my life. Outside of that hour and a half, once a month, that never happens to me. I don't know about you, but I'm never in a room with 15 people that lost a kid. No, no. Without anyone that hasn't. Yeah. (laughs) I'm so with you. (laughs) Like it's our world for that moment. Yeah. Do you ever, have you ever said this to Sage? And I, I found myself saying this. Aaron, we're going to be all right here. Don't take guilt with you. It's okay. See you soon. But please enjoy where you are. Do you, have, do you ever feel that? Yeah, yeah, I do. I my larger assumption is that where he is, there isn't any guilt. Amen. So, amen. I would say that that is a fleeting thing. Like I always, I don't know why, but the moment he was gone, I just, well, man, I hope he knows how much I loved him. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and he does. He does. But you're like, is there something that had to happen here? You know, I don't, I don't know the rules. And one of the things about not being, uh, I'll say this. I don't have it all figured out dogmatically because nobody does. Everybody's got a different version. Yeah. But I'm not going to be surprised. I'm cool with whatever God's got there. Right. You know what I mean? I, I don't care. Right. Cool. Whatever. Yeah. And, like if God says, hey, man, I got to be honest with you, man. My, my name wasn't Jesus. It was Pete and they got it wrong. This, <laughs> I'm not going to be all, all distraught. You know what I mean? And, yeah. If there's someone there that I didn't plan on seeing there, I'm going to be cool with it. Yeah, because you're not the judge anyway. Because I'm not going to be the judge. I, I, I can do the thing. With fall, I will not be the guy going, but look at all these works I did, God. Didn't I earn my way to heaven? Because I know I can't. Mm-hmm. That's a good thing about knowing you're a piece of shit. Uh, and I don't mean that in a, in a negative right. way. It means right. in in my best efforts are as filthy rags. I'm comfortable with that. Like mm-hmm. that that being the the thing. Um, but I I know this life means something. So I hope when he was here, that it was expressed to him how much he was loved. Um, and I do believe, as time goes on, and maybe even the veil gets thicker and all that kind of thing, I do believe there's no possible way he couldn't have known how much he was loved because Mm -hmm. he was, as are his two brothers, everything to his mom and I, um, her parents, she's my, Michelle's an only child. So that's the only grandchildren they have. So they were everything to them. Mm -hmm. Um, my extended family, my brother and my sisters, my nieces and nephews, um, um, my mom, who's still here. By the way, when, when Sage passed, the very first thought, the very first thought in my head, I drove up, I parked the dad that he was at his house, uh, met me in the yard. And I said, is he okay? And he said, no. And I knew he was, I thought about, I felt my dad with him. Harder. I, I just thought about my dad. I'm like, he's with my dad. And I don't know why I had that. I didn't know. There was nothing preconceived about right. that. The whole way to that house, I was yeah. yelling at God, surely we're going to get one, overdose allowed this will wake him up and this will be the end of this crap um 
But when I knew he was gone, I knew he was with my dad. Um, I don't know. I, I have to believe they absolutely know. They're both, if they're not snowboarding or whatever, yeah, uh, right. they're watching this. <laughs> as, I think they are. As you and I are doing it, you said before, we're going to have this amazing dinner with all of us dads in this group that we have and all of our sons and we get to meet them. I mean, if you can't look forward to that, right? I don't know what you got. You know, I, <laughs> I don't know why I you feel got. sorry for the atheists, man. This would be, this would yeah. suck. Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine doing this without God? No. Uh, uh-uh. uh, um, I like to think that this wasn't a mistake. God didn't make a mistake with all our different varying personalities, um, likes, dislikes, colors, just put it all in one big bowl and stir it up. Everything was on purpose. God made sage just like he was going to make sage. Mm -hmm. That's the way sage. Sage is in the presence of God with Aaron and so many beautiful children. Um, with their own thumbprint, yeah. circling back, I know, but why? what is this concept of getting to heaven? Now we're all robots and we're different. Look, that's still Aaron and Sage. They're there. God wanted them there like they are, and they'll go from that forward there. I just love to think of their personalities on stun, just like they were here, the same people. I mean, I couldn't agree with you more, and and I'm taking it one step further than that. If we are known, we'll be known as we're known. Which is where I'm getting that, yeah, that Bible verse. We have this, we have this, I, I was kind of raised thinking that if you committed suicide, your last act of like, it was the last thing you did before you died was the whole pie, you know, I mean, Oh, he said a prayer with me. So my, I don't know how many times my parents or someone at church tried, tried to convince us that an atheist was okay, that he went to heaven because they, they had prayed with him right beforehand. I mean, we, we, we justify what we want to believe, but my heart and my mind all tell me that we have decisions to make when we're there. The devil was an angel. In that life, he made a decision. I do believe that we will have decisions to make when we are there. Yeah. Because if God did what let us go through all of this and then took our free will away in heaven, how heavenly would that be? Yeah. If there's no free will, we're just animals and we have no soul. So my instinct is that we have decisions to make when we are there in heaven, yeah. consistently making decisions, and that by living this life, especially the way we've gotten to live it, I was funny. I was with my um, our brother and our friend Lance one time, and we were talking about kids, and you know, my my heart's hurting because I'm there's a hole in mine that I'm missing, and I just thought heaven is going to be so much better for me than it is for those two. I feel so sorry for them. <laughs> now <laughs> I love these two guys like as close yeah. as I can be, but uh -huh. heaven's going to be better for me in some ways, because I'm going to get that thing that I didn't, that I, man. So if we have decisions to make there, I think the hell is a door locked from the inside. The CS Lewis quote seems pretty genius to me. And we all are trying to figure out things that aren't figure outable. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, do I don't know. know. My heart tells me the signs that I see tell me that my son is fine. It tells me that I miss him yeah. and I hurt, but that he's okay. Maybe way, way better than okay. Mm -hmm. And Aaron too. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how they do it without thinking there's a next awesome thing. I mean, as a bet hedger, I would just yeah probably go with it. But I, I, I don't even believe that way anymore. I mean, I, I like feel it. Yeah. I'm, I'm in tune with it. it. For me, it's such an early age to have poked my head up over the clouds and feel it and really take it in. Now it wasn't just, it was, a, it was a good solid moment of warmth 
It was almost like you could take your hand and put it in a fire and not get burned. It was that warm. It was that, you know, if you were freezing. You know what I'm saying? It was just very real. <laughs> very real. And um, it, it has, it has really helped to me. And uh, it's it just really me. helped me a lot. So yeah. 40, 50 years ago, that happens, and then in 2020, it enables you to call me, share not only losing a child, but share with me the the near-death experience that I so <clears throat> greatly, and by the way, that was my, you were my introduction to that, because I didn't, I'm like, wow, man, Jimmy's really peaceful about this. Like I, So then I start reading, I start reading books, and I start watching YouTube videos, and, and that Mary C. Neal book that we both shared seven lessons from heaven just just the realest part of it and um the the ripple of that it's who knows so, so that happened that long ago just so we could you had to go through all this crap just so you get to tell me and whatever it is that i'm gonna Man. that i'm gonna share with somebody else that that makes it through there um i don't think that god's will was for our sons to die certainly not the way they did um it keeps me from blaming him i don't think it's his will but it's right. certainly it's his yeah. plan. It's part of his plan. I'm in his plan. By the way, we can pray for your will to be done or we can not, but it's going to be done. <laughs> we might as well just ask for it. Just right? have a good attitude. You know I mean? about it. Give me the lashing, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's going to, we're going to, we're going to, God's will will be done regardless of how we, how we feel about it. So um, if I can get okay with that, the pain, yeah, the, 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 the discomfort, right. Um, it makes me search you out. It makes you search me out. It makes us search our other brothers in this thing out and, and give each other those things. And if it didn't, if I didn't have that pain, maybe I didn't, maybe I don't, if you didn't have the pain, maybe you don't search me out. Mm -hmm. If I don't have the pain, maybe I don't search out another guy. Yeah. And then we don't have a room full of guys getting healthy together, trying to get healthy together. Right. So the pain serves a purpose. Yeah. Yes. And like you said, uh, we're not running from this. We're actually running into it. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay, this is my reality. Um, let me get everything in this that I can to benefit and to benefit others to pass it on. I'll tell you one thing that about the experiences is the actual moment of passing into the next world is so like falling off a log. It it is not a you know what I mean. Uh, Hollywood has turned it into this horrible thing to be dreaded. I'm telling you, it's it's natural. Listen to the way she says in that book when she's down under the water, and she can feel her a pop and her spirit come out. There was no pain. Well, the major fear of drowning while she's twenty feet right. under the water. Right. That was it. I mean, I tell, I always say to somebody like, I, like I know, but I do, I do. I don't have to go through it, but I'm like, if you're somewhere stressful and you're in physical pain, you're not dying. Don't worry. Yeah. Right. If you're having physical pain, don't worry too hard. Cause you're not going to die. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Because when you die, there is no pain. I've studied enough of them to know you're over there already. When you go, it's peaceful. It's pain free, then you don't have you. I think that I've, man, I've read guys, they realize how much pain was in their body when they don't have it anymore. That's why I'm tattooing mine up. It's this, 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 this is just a vessel, and mine's got bumper stickers on it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just a vehicle, Jimmy. Yeah, I mean, you know I'm I mean? with you. Come you on, know, just, just, just tatting it up. Um, uh, I, I always, I know you're, you're, it's awesome. You're going to go play on a Kenny Chesney record after we finish this today. I hope you make magic like always. I hope it's your song. Um, it's not. You know, I went from, I got a couple, Tim, I got a couple Tim McGraw cuts this morning. <laughs> it's not. Oh, you did? I found out about, and all I, when you said you're going to cut a Ch Kenny Chesney record, I, I was a little pissed off because I don't have any songs in there. Mm. <laughs> I always end this with a, uh, a two part question. The, uh, the two parts are what is the worst thing that ever happened to you? And what is the best thing that came out of that? Wow, that's great. That's a great question. That's a great question. I mean, the first part of that is uh, 
is obviously going to be losing Aaron as the worst thing. And of course that happened to him, but it also affected me. So I'm going to, I'm going to say that the worst thing I've experienced losses. My folks, both my folks, um, I've gone on Kim and I's first child was a miscarriage way up into pregnancy. So I actually have two sons sons over there. Wow. He was far enough along where the doctor told us it was a boy. So I'm sure that he met Aaron and said, yeah, all right, finally. (laughs) So, um, that would be the worst losing Aaron. The best thing, and these, this is an easy answer for me because it all revolves around that moment, that the process of continuing to realize where he is. Mm-hmm. I mean, last week I, I woke up crying because I was having a dream of Aaron as a little boy running through the house, you know, with little blonde hair just playing, asking me questions, just enjoying the day. And so when you have those and you wake up and you're just bawling and and then you think, oh, thanks for that. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that. (laughs) Oh, it was awesome. Yeah. To see him. So the best thing to come out of it is even a deeper yearning to be in heaven. I'm looking forward to that. And while I'm still on my way there to try to spread the love and a little awesome vision Mm -hmm. and a little lighter look at it all, you know, there is hope. There's an amazing amount of hope. I mean, and you're, you're doing just that is playing on, you play on people's records, which by the way, sometimes they're new, sometimes they're older, but you're getting ready to go play on a Kenny Chesney record. Change your approach on that stuff. I mean, I, in some ways it means more to me, and some ways it means way less. So I'm just curious on on your side of the street. I think the only honestly, just the first thought that came to my mind was, I'm sitting there, starting, you know, on the 30th of May, 2019, going forward with this extra thing in the room that no one has a clue that I have this expectancy, this excitement, this lighter approach. You dig that? You don't like that? Let's do another one here. Let's do another one. What do you want? Is this cool? Is this sucking? Let's get Mark Hill in here (laughs) or Craig or Tony. You know what I'm saying? All right, we'll get you happy. That's I just want you to be happy with this. Um, it is a lighter approach. Um, you have more of that guy, by the way? Oh, what's that? You have more of that guy? It's, I mean, it, you appear to not compete at all. You're like, if you don't like what I do, pay. I, you've I always probably been that way, but are, are, are you more? Oh, yeah. Even more mm-hmm. that guy? I am because this is this is something I'm doing today. And I'm so, you know, I love music. We love music. We just want to, I, I would do it if they didn't pay me. Don't tell anyone. Yeah. Let's cut sometimes they don't pay me. But... <laughs> I would do it anyway, but but yes, I, it's all a lighter approach, but it's kind of fun to be on the ready should someone, eventually, someone asks me about what it is that I believe in, and if they see a piece in me. And, um, you know, uh, at that point, I will go over to the side of the room and I'll just let them know, here's why I'm like I am. I mean, I, I got some hope. I got hope. Hey man, love is patient. And I don't know what that means to everyone, but what it means to me is you don't have to lead with it. Yeah. You don't have to lead with your dogma or your, you can, it's fine, whatever. Don't lead with politics. Don't, to me, to Mm -hmm. me, if you lead with politics, you're going to have half the friends in the world. And if you lead with religion, you're going to have about an eighth of the friends because the likelihood of you winding up in a, me winding up talking to a spirit filled Pentecostal Southern Baptist hybrid. Catholic now, uh, it's very rare. (laughs) I'm going to, I don't, I don't have dogma. I, I I have a relationship. Yeah. And 
you have always been someone in that uh, that piece that you got from that five year old kid getting hit with that pencil. It, it does carry over, and I we always say in recovery, you know, you look at someone and say, "I want what he's got," not in an envious way, but like, "I want what he's got." Stick with the winners. I'm going to do that. And and then you look at someone else who knows all the rules and knows all the, the 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 big book and all the things to do, but their life's in shambles. And you're like, I don't want that. Well, I can say as a as a father who lost a child, as a musician, uh, a songwriter, and fear of imposter syndrome constantly, and whatever it might be, I want what you got. I do, and I, I and I have some of that now because I've spent time with you, and we. Um, you came to me, we've gone to other people and it's, um, it's changed. I don't, I can't give, I don't know how much credit to give to each particular thing, but I'm so grateful for each little thing that happened to keep me off of, I say left road because right road was, I'm going to walk straight into all of this yeah. with my big ass mouth and my, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and my short fuse or whatever yeah, it is, but I'm going to walk yeah. straight into it and do the best I can. Mm-hmm. And left road was, I you know I've talked about it on here. I you know God, if you take one of my kids, I'm drinking again. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't have been that sweet little alcoholic over in the corner of the bar. Man, he lost his son, patting him on the head. I would have ruined everyone's life, and I mean everybody's close to me. And I would probably be in jail and um, or dead myself. What an honor that would be to my son if I oh yeah took that gotcha. out right. And somehow God took any desire to be that idiot that would disrespect my son and his memory so much to, as to mm-hmm. do the same thing. So now I'm cool with living to a hundred. I'm cool with living to next week. Yeah. Either one. Um, I enjoy mm-hmm. the, the, the grind we have to do a little more. Um, I still, I'm still a human being still got its selfish streak. Uh, all the things that we can do, but um, man, I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not as worried about it. I'm not afraid of death. And, no, 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 no. Um, That's great. I, I know you're not either. That's you and 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 a, ten of my friends that come in here have taught me that. Um, and I, and we're now I'm helping teach the new guys that like we're not out there playing in traffic, but not being afraid of death is killer. I recommend it highly. Right. <laughs> you know. Oh man, it's it, we talk about the reluctant road we're on. We don't. We don't. We didn't pick it. We wish we weren't on it, but this road, it it can have, it can have a piece about it. I mean, do I miss Aaron every second? Do I breathe him in and breathe him out? That boy mm-hmm. was just so unbelievably awesome. You know, I remember driving to the service and seeing everybody on the roads. I know you you guys went through this. You're seeing cars stop at stop signs. You're seeing people arguing in a parking lot. I'm going to this place where I'm going to put my son away, right? And I'm wondering, how in the world is this world even turning around? How is this? How are you going about your day? How are you? Do you not see? And um, And to out of that have a desire to try to help someone that just started that road and, or someone that's been on it for 20 years longer than I have. And maybe my little something can help them a little bit too. I mean, I, I, I don't think I have anything special to offer, but because of that thumbprint, I have just what I have to offer and maybe it'll find ears somewhere out there that'll help someone. The willingness to share it. You got a lot to offer, but I understand what you're saying. I am not sure what I have to offer. Like, um, it's just the regurgitation of anything good I've heard, and I can do that. Um, but the willingness to come do it, to, you know, to come sit here and do this, it's not, it's not in my nature. It is not in my nature to sit down and, and talk about this in front of people. Um, I don't care about my nature anymore. My nature sucks. <laughs> you know, I know my nature never yeah. needed anything to get me in rehab. I don't need, I don't need to follow my nature. I know if I know what's right now, I'm not foolproof. Not per- I'm just trying to do it. Just do it. Even if it's, even if it's uncomfortable, even if it's not what I want to do, just sc- screw my nature. You know, mm-hmm. that, that, that guy will get you in trouble. Um, Boy. But when we have the knowledge of what's right and then we don't go chase it, that's our own fault. 
But um, I, I mean, I, I I couldn't be more I couldn't be more grateful for you. You're you're an absolute genius uh, musician. Uh, it's funny because we one of our funny stories is about you picking up the guitar in the studio and just blazing. I mean, you you play humble guy, but you really are very special at that. And I love your your um your fake humility. It's awesome. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you're bound to know how good you are. <laughs> no, no, it's not fake. Because the truth is, you just it isn't it isn't who you are. It's what you do. Um, but I I love that, and that the truth is that the respect that I go, man, this is a guy that's a, that's a giant in my business, and I I know that's a go to, and and us getting to work together a little bit on on the Jared Neiman record. Uh, enough relationship and respect there to when when it happened when our things when our worlds collided um i'm grateful for those so if if all of this music business and all the crap that we do and have gone through and whatever and all the records and the songwriting can collide us at the right moment cool maybe this thing's a platform and not so much um you know i am not impressed with me (laughs) you know what i mean i'm not impressed with with as much with what we do I, now. So uh, interestingly, now I do it for the right reason a lot more. Yeah. I mean, I'm s- still a capitalist, you know, still want to make money, but, right. but I, I want to do something great. Um, I'd rather skip all the average if I can, just wipe it off the table. And on, unfortunately, a lot of times I'm shooting for great and we wind up on that average table. It's just, it just happens. Same here. <laughs> you can go there. Mm-hmm. Service industry, we have to do. Uh, what we're doing <laughs> but I'm oh grateful for our roads uh, uh, God I don't know. I, I'm not I'm not grateful for how they cross but I'm grateful that they've crossed um, if I gotta be in this shit box I'm glad I'm here with you uh, back <laughs> at you instead of being in our each our own so uh, thank you man thanks for doing this oh, um, I love you I love you so much I love you too brother you're the best appreciate you Rap. I got, I got so, that was so good, I made a mess back there. Did, I, did you really? <laughs>